Good morning and welcome to worship with Pleasant Hill Presbyterian Church. I'm delighted to be leading you in worship this morning. I'm Pastor Katie Day. I'll be joined in worship leadership by Pastor Jenny Sankey, by our reader, Sarah Steingruber, by Hindu Song, our organist, and as always, we are blessed with digital recordings of our choir led by Steve Dean, and communications coordinator Claire Kaiser produces and edits this entire digital worship service. Following worship today, we invite you to try something a little outside the box. You're invited to celebrate a drive-through day of blessings. Uh, for those of you who participated in the welcome parade when my family first uh, first came here and uh, my first Sunday, it will be much like that. You're invited to get in your car following worship um, from 1230 to 130. We will be at the church campus. You can drive in through the back parking lot. We'll have signs and folks directing you and you can drive around through under the portico and out the front parking lot exits. You won't even have to get out of your car. We invite you to come and be blessed by your pastors, by seeing one another's faces and uh, friendly waves and also to be a blessing to others if you would like to drop off any donations for our mission partners the Duluth Co-op and Clifton Sanctuary Ministries as well as anything for our own little free pantry I hope to see you later today Take some time, if you haven't already, and sign our virtual friendship pad. Let us know you're worshiping together with us. You can find it on the worship page of our website, pleasanthillpc.org, on the same page where you found this service, in fact. And as always, we hope you're finding ways to connect with your church family throughout the week. On our Pleasant Hill Presbyterian Church Facebook page, you're invited to happy hour on Tuesday at 5. Jenny will be leading this week, and then I will lead us on Saturday at 10 in the morning for psalm and prayer. So we hope to see you on Facebook Live this week as well. And now, let's transition from getting here to being fully present as we gather in worship and we prepare our hearts and minds to meet and be met by the God who created us and loves us. Join me as we call ourselves to worship in the presence of God. God meets us in our greatest need and satisfies us with divine presence and provision. God touches us and transforms us to reach out to all who hunger. God keeps our feet on the path of righteousness and blesses us to multiply blessings to others. In gratitude, let us worship God, and let us begin with singing our first hymn.
Together let us confess our sins in the presence of the one who blesses us and meets our needs. Let us pray. God of compassion, we have wrestled all night with worry instead of resting in you. We have asserted our own goodness instead of awakening to yours. We have turned away those hungry for your help instead of trusting you and feeding them from your limitless supply of blessings. Forgive us, heal us, and help us to hold on to you. We call upon you, for you will answer us, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of steadfast love is our refuge and our savior. In Christ, we who are broken are healed, forgiven, filled, and transformed. We are blessed. And in that spirit of blessing, let us multiply God's blessings to others as we pass the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. It's time for our children's sermon. So come closer, come closer so you can see friends. Sometimes it feels like everything's a little scary, doesn't it? Today, Pastor Katie is going to preach about a story where God gives a man named Jacob a blessing, which is a gift from God, but not until after a scary wrestling match. And as I tell you this story, I want you to listen for the word scared or scary. And every time you hear it, I want you to make your best scared face. And I want you to listen for the word blessing, a gift from God. And I want you to give yourself a hug when you hear it. So after living for many years away from home, Jacob missed his brother Esau more and more. And he finally decided it was time to go see him again. But Jacob was scared to go see his brother. Last time he saw his brother, Esau was really mad at him because Jacob had left, uh, left home with his father's Isaac's money. Jacob was scared that his brother would still be mad. But on his way home to see his brother, something even scarier happened. One night, Jacob took his whole family across the river, the last one they had to cross before they got home. He sat down in the dark by the river to think. Nearby, something moved. Jacob jumped. Who was it? Was it his brother, Esau? A ghost? A stranger? He couldn't tell in the dark. Suddenly, whoever it was grabbed Jacob and wrestled with him. They wrestled and wrestled into the night. Jacob couldn't see anything. He didn't know what to do. When he was more scared than he could ever remember being, Jacob heard a voice. The voice said, let go. Jacob was scared to let go. Would he get hurt? He said, I'll only let go if you bless me. The voice said, what's your name? Jacob, he said. Then the voice surprised Jacob. The blessing I'm going to give you is a new name. Your name will remind you that God is always with you, no matter what happens, no matter how scared you get. Even when you can't see and don't know what to do, God will be there. Your new name will be Israel. And then everything disappeared. The voice was silent. The stranger was gone. Jacob, named Israel, sat down by himself to think about it. And when the sun rose, Jacob got up and walked away from the river to meet his family. He was limping from his wrestling with the stranger, and he had a new name. He told his family his name reminded him that God would be there when things got scary, even in the dark, even when he didn't know what to do. Now he wanted to see his family again more than ever. And he thought, now I have the courage to see Esau again. God has blessed me. A lot of you are starting school this week, if you haven't already, and it's going to be different than school has ever been before. New things can be exciting or scary or wonderful or confusing. And no matter how you are feeling, whether you are going to school from home or at a school building or at a friend's house or not at all, 
God will be with you and God will give you a blessing just like God gave Jacob. And you don't have to have a wrestling match to get it. Today at church, we're having a day of blessings where you and your family can come drive through to receive blessings. You'll get a backpack tag or a sticker that looks like this. You'll get some other goodies and you can give blessing to others and drop off some donations. Whether you can come to the drive-thru or not today though, we want you to know that you are loved and blessed by God and loved and blessed by this church. And when things get scary, God will be with you. So I have a blessing for you. Let's close today with a blessing and this is my blessing for you and while I give you this blessing Every time I say the word bless or blessing. I want you to give yourself a hug. Give yourself a hug. All right All right, so listen and participate in this blessing by giving yourself a hug God Bless my friends because you are always with them Bless them when things are exciting. Bless them when things are scary. Bless them when things are confusing. And bless them when things are wonderful. Bless them. Be with them every day and all the time. Mm -hmm. Help them to feel your presence with them on the first day of school and every day. Bless them to be blessings to others. Amen. All right, I'll see you at our blessings parade at church in a little bit. Bye. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. All knowing God, you have sanctified our hunger at sunset and held us close through nights of wrestling. Now let the day break with your blessing. Awaken and illumine us with your word that we may behold your likeness. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Listen now for God's word to us this morning. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Genesis, which means beginning. It's the first book in our Bible, chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. Listen again for God's word to us today. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the river Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So the man said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Holy wisdom, holy words, thanks be to God. I had a friend in seminary who loved professional wrestling. He especially loved Ric Flair, the nature boy, who was platinum blonde and massive, the winner of something like 20 different championship titles. My friend would talk for hours about wrestling, who was feuding with whom, who had alliances with whom, and despite the fact that everyone now knows that WWE is in fact scripted and choreographed, he just loved the drama of it all. The theatricality, the lights, the special effects, the costumes, and the wrestling itself, he could name an incredible number of signature moves. Professional wrestling is a far cry from what we read in the text this morning. What we have here is something else entirely. It's unrehearsed, unrefined, no holds barred, and it's life-changing. But before we get to the wrestling match, 
just like in WWE, we first need to introduce the characters. So in this corner, we have Jacob. Jacob is complicated. Jacob is the son of Isaac, who was himself the child of promise born to Abraham and Sarah when they were well beyond childbearing years first of many descendants that God had promised them, so many that they would outnumber the stars. And Isaac and his wife Rebecca had twin boys, Jacob and Esau. From the start, Jacob proved himself to be a handful. Rebecca said that the boys were like two warring nations in her womb. And when the time for birth came, Esau was born first, but Jacob came right behind grasping Esau's heel. The name Jacob itself means heel and grasper and trickster and overreacher. And those are Jacob to a T. Jacob wasn't satisfied to be the second born child in a culture where the firstborn inherited everything. And so he connived and tricked his way into first place. He duped his brother Esau, who was ripe for the duping, let's be honest, by preparing a delicious and fragrant stew. And when Esau came inside ravenous after working hard, Jacob said Esau could have a bowl of stew in exchange for his birthright. Esau agreed, bless his heart. And then Jacob duped his father, who by this time was old and practically blind. Jacob put animal skins on his arms to simulate Esau's hairy arms. And when Isaac called his firstborn son to receive the family blessing, Jacob came instead of Esau, duped his father, and was blessed. Esau was furious at this, of course, and Jacob, fearing for his life, for not only was Esau filled with rage and telling everyone he was going to kill Jacob, he actually was much bigger and stronger than Jacob. So Jacob ran away to stay with relatives in the hill country to the north to let Esau calm down for a few years. And this is where our passage picks up the story. After these many years, Jacob sent messengers with gifts to his brother Esau, asking for reconciliation, and he had received word that his brother was coming to meet him with 400 men. Perhaps Esau hadn't quite gotten over being swindled out of his inheritance. So Jacob decided to send more gifts to Esau ahead of him, hoping to appease his brother's anger with material possessions. And Jacob decided to spend the night on the banks of the river Jabbok. He sent his family and remaining flocks and possessions on ahead of him, and he spent the night alone. And then we hear in the story that a man wrestled with Jacob until daybreak. This is odd and it's so surprising. This isn't something that you would expect to happen in this story. Now people interpret this text in different ways. Some say that it's Esau who came early and wrestled with his brother. Some say it's an angel. Jacob himself seemed to believe that it was God, God in human form. I'll go with Jacob on this one and agree it is God with whom Jacob wrestled. So why does God show up in human form to wrestle with Jacob all night long, the night before Jacob faces his brother who may or may not want to kill him? God's ways are not our ways. We don't get to know the whys and hows, but we do get to see what happened next. God, in the form of a human, initiated the wrestling and God didn't win. Maybe this is why God appeared as a human. For God to show up as God's own self, well, obviously God could overpower anyone. But to show up as a human, to limit God's power, emptying God's self, taking the form of a servant, that sounds familiar. Oh yes, that's Paul talking about the incarnation of Jesus Christ. We Christians know all about God in human form. So God appeared to Jacob in human form, wrestled with him all night long, and God didn't win. The text tells us that twice. 
Jacob prevailed. God didn't win, but did God lose? Interesting theological quandary. When Jacob saw, when, when God saw that Jacob was prevailing, God struck Jacob on the hip, dislocating it, leaving Jacob with a limp. The winner of this match was not walking away unscathed. God in human form demanded to be released, that Jacob relax his grasp for it's almost daybreak. Now, this isn't out of concern for God, but rather out of concern for Jacob, for to look at the face of God in full daylight would be certain death. And Jacob, being Jacob, demanded something in return for releasing God, a blessing. God ignores that request for the moment and instead asked something peculiar. What is your name? And so Jacob has to tell God his name. Jacob, heel, trickster, manipulator, conniver, usurper. None of these things is positive or flattering. And so God renames Jacob Israel which doesn't just mean struggles with God, but actually means more like God struggles or God rules. And then God blessed Jacob and Jacob released God and limped on to meet his brother. Spoiler, spoiler alert, here's what happens next if you want to read ahead. Esau, turns out, is not murderous and angry, but gracious and kind delighted to meet Jacob's wives and children and refused to accept any of the gifts that Jacob offered him. And Jacob, who for the first time in his life humbled himself, bowing to his brother seven times upon greeting him, Jacob, Israel, said this, If I find favor with you, then accept my present from my hand, for truly to see your face is like seeing the face of God, since you have received me with such favor. Please accept my gift that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have everything I want. It's as if Jacob is a different person. Jacob wrestled with God. He wrestled all night and he wouldn't let go. But God also wrestled with Jacob all night long, wounding him, leaving him with a limp, and renaming him, leaving him with a new identity. What a blessing. No longer the trickster, the one who wanted more and could never have enough, Jacob became Israel, the one who would not let God go, the one who would father a nation whose descendants would outnumber the stars, the one for whom God's grace became enough broken and blessed in order to be a blessing to generations. And the children of Israel, the people, Israel, they lived into that name. Throughout scripture, we see Israel, a community of faith, striving with God, demanding that God fulfill God's promises, pleading with God to remember those promises, angry with God, turning away from God, turning once again to God, and refusing to let go. And God loved them as God loved Jacob. God loved them as God loves us. John Golden Gay, an Old Testament scholar at Fuller Seminary, says this, We are a people whose nature is to struggle with God to avoid becoming the people we could be and a people with whom God continues to struggle to try to take us there. God will wrestle us again and again all night long to help us become the people we were created and called to be. God will bless us in our brokenness. Change is hard, right? Becoming someone new is hard. Change is hard. And we have faced a lot of change lately. We went from blissful freedom at the beginning of this calendar year to the frightening awakening to the realities of COVID-19, to 
the new normal of quarantining and mask wearing and rigorous hand washing, which we should have already been doing, to be honest. We don't like it. No one likes this. And it's hard to acknowledge that this is something we will most likely be facing for a long time, much longer than we initially imagined. Change is hard. And in addition to pandemic life, many of us are waking up to a time of social change as we bear witness to the communal rage and grief of over 400 years of injustice against black folks and our African-American siblings. We cannot unsee and unknow what we are being shown and told. And while we may long for the days of ignorance, even as we white folks face our own racism, our own biases and uncomfortable conversations we might prefer to avoid, God is calling us to justice here and now. God is calling us to become the people we were created to be, people of justice, people who care for our community, people of faith. Change is hard. We are wrestling and the night is long and dawn doesn't seem to be breaking quite yet. Jacob didn't want to change any more than we do. He wasn't repentant or remorseful. He never actually apologized for his behavior to his family or to God. And maybe he didn't actually change all that much. But I do wonder if every time he introduced himself with his new name and he didn't have to identify with all the negative connotations of Jacob the trickster, and maybe even after his hip healed somewhat, it still twinged from time to time, reminding him of who he was and who he is now becoming. Broken and blessed. Blessed in the brokenness and called to be a blessing to countless others. From the story Sarah read earlier, someone or several someones offered up their personal food, their dinner they brought from home when they came to hear Jesus preach. Five loaves and two fish, they offered it up, and more than 5,000 people ate. Because when we trust God's blessing, even in the midst of our brokenness, we can go beyond what we think or know is right and we can find ourselves reconnected with those around us. No longer individuals, but a community. A community becoming what we were called to be and this invites God to do what God loves doing, multiplying. From that story, taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And the disciples took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. God multiplies. We have multiple ways this morning to be blessed and to bless others and to risk God multiplying our efforts. In a few moments in our prayers, we will bless our children, our teachers, all students as they start this strange and scary pandemic school year, praying for peace, for safety, for learning, for generous goodness for each one of them. It isn't a hard thing to do to bless someone with prayer. It doesn't require much. You don't even have to give up your dinner. And in another moment, you'll have the opportunity to contribute to this congregation financially to support what we are doing and how we believe God is calling us to work in our neighborhood and in the world in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this season of social change here and now. God is calling us and we are responding. And following worship, I hope that you will drive over to the church campus to receive blessings in the form of simple gifts, compassionate faces, friendly waves, and prayers from your pastors. 
And if you have something to share, you can bring donations of non-perishable foods, paper products, cleaning part products to bless the folks at Duluth Co-op and Clifton and our neighbors who utilize our little free pantry on a daily basis. I hope to see you there. May God bless us, everyone. Amen. Friends, our affirmation of faith this morning is the Nicene Creed, one of our oldest historic confessions of faith. It was crafted over the course of a century, more than a century, begun in the year 325, almost finalized by the year 451, and then finally complete in the year 589. I chose this confession for us this morning to affirm what it is we believe as Christians, as people of faith, because this confession, this articulation of who God is, was a blessing in its becoming. It was a process, and it still continues to bless us today. So friends, together, let us now confess what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It's time to spend a few minutes in prayer. First, we'll begin on our own in silent prayer. Then I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer and we'll close together aloud with the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. God of daybreak, you have held us through the night once more and awoken us to see your likeness in this brand new day. As we walk with you, show us the world and its people through your compassionate eyes. Bless us, break us, and move through us, that we may be changed and charged to heal, feed, and care for your world. Bless us, break us, and move through all who are called by your name. Charge us to answer you. Bless us, break us, and move through your people who are displaced, injured, grieving, and responding to the explosion in Beirut. Charge us with the hope that is found in Christ. Bless us, break us, and move through your church. Charge us to bear witness to the divine in each person. Bless us, break us, and move through your creation. Charge us to bring healing and preservation to the good gifts you've given us. 
Bless us, break us, and move through the leaders of our nations and communities. Charge us with your wisdom and discernment, your compassion as our guide, and your justice as our goal. Bless us, break us, and move through those who are sick, those who are worried about getting sick, and those who care for us when we are sick. Charge us with deep compassion for our fellow human beings. Bless us, break us, and move through those who are sad and grieving. Charge us with your peace that passes all understanding. Bless us, break us, and move through those who are working toward a vaccination, new treatments, faster tests, and strategies for living together in a pandemic. Charge us with hopefulness. Bless us, break us, and move through those who are beginning school as students, teachers, and staff. Charge us with moments of calm in the midst of anxious days. Bless us, break us, and move through our friends and families those who we see every day, and those we haven't been able to see in a while. Charge us with renewed patience as we wait for reunions and hugs. Bless us, break us, and move through all the other things in our hearts and on our minds that weigh heavy and pop up when we least expect them. Charge us to bring all things to you in prayer. Thank you for the small blessings of every day. Thank you for hearing us when we pray. Thank you for your love. Thank you for wrestling with us, struggling with us, walking with us through the night and through the day. Bless us, break us, and move among us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Family, this is your opportunity to support the mission and ministries of Pleasant Hill Presbyterian Church through your financial gifts. It is due to your great generosity and faithfulness that we are able to remain in ministry these days, that we are able to not just maintain what we do, but expand our reach to care for neighbors far and near in need, to continue to grow in faithfulness as we seek ways to offer fellowship, education, and worship opportunities for you all in these days. So friends, thank you for your generosity, and please give joyfully, give as God calls you to give. You can do that in a few different ways. The first is to return to our website, pleasanthillpc.org, and click on the Giving tab. You can text GIVEPHPC to 73256, or you can mail your offering to the church, 3700 Pleasant Hill Road, Duluth, Georgia, 30096. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the generous gifts, and we give you thanks for the givers. We are grateful for these offerings and what we are able to do because of them. We ask that you would accept these gifts and use them for the service of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And as always, O oh God, transform everything we say and do so that our entire lives become an offering to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
touched, changed, called, empowered, and blessed. Go now in the power and provision of Christ to heal the sick, to feed the hungry, to serve the world by being a blessing to all. Christ himself, who holds you in his hands, has blessed you in the brokenness and has given you as his gift to the world. May the grace of Christ be multiplied to you and through you, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.